In this lesson, we're going to continue our exploration of different types of exponents. And for this one, we're going to look at rational exponents. Rational numbers, of course, are just another way of saying numbers that are fractions. Uh, so, for example, 1 over n happens to be a rational number. What happens if our exponent is a fraction? We're going to start with this example right here. We have 2 to the exponent 4 in brackets, and that entire power is to the exponent 1 half. What we want to try to do is to figure out what on earth an exponent of 1 half even does. And this is how we're going to do it. 2 to the exponent 4, then to the exponent 1 half. We know there's an exponent law where an exponent outside of a power, we multiply the exponents. So we can say this is equivalent to 2 to the exponent whatever 4 times 1 half is. 4 times 1 half is 4 over 2, or simply 2. So this whole thing is equivalent to 2 to the exponent 2, which is also equal to 4. Now, if we just looked at this power by itself, or this bracket, and we said, OK, 2 to the exponent 4, what does that equal? Well, 2 to the exponent 4 is the same thing as saying 16. So really what we're saying is 16 to the exponent 1 half, that will end up equaling 4. Maybe we don't have enough information yet to quite figure out how on earth 16 to the exponent 1 half gets to be 4. Did we subtract 12? Did we divide by 4? I don't know what we did. So let's look at another example and see if we can piece together what on earth this exponent 1 half means. Same sort of idea, but this time we're going to have 3 to the exponent 2 times 1 half. Again, if we multiply the exponents together, we'll end up with 3 to the exponent 2 times 1 half is just 2 over 2, or equals 1. So that's 3 to the exponent 1, which we know is just 3. Or another way to write it, 3 squared is 9 to the exponent 1 half. This somehow has to equal 3. So what's the relationship here? How do we get from 16 to the exponent 1 half all the way to 4, and 9 to the exponent 1 half all the way to 3? Can you see the pattern? Hopefully we realize that the mathematical operation is taking a square root. If we take the square root of 16, we can see that that equals 4. And if we take the square root of 9, we can see that that equals 3. So really, this exponent 1 half is equivalent to saying, take the square root. So if all that is true, what do we think an exponent of 1 third would do? Again, let's use this example and use our exponent laws. 5 to the exponent 3 to the exponent 1 third, we'd multiply the exponents, so 3 times 1 third is just 3 over 3, or 1, so this equals just 5. But another way to look at it is to evaluate the power in the brackets. So 5 to the exponent 3 is 5 times 5 times 5, or 125. How does 125 to the exponent 1 third become 5? Well, the square root wouldn't work. But if we cube root 125, we end up with 5. So in actuality, what we're doing is we are taking a cubed root. Looks like this. And that equals 5. So here's the general rule. Anytime we have the exponent to 1 half, we notice that that means it's a square root. And anytime we have an exponent of 1 third, that means it's a cube root. So in general, any exponent 1 over n, where n is just some number, means we're taking the nth root of the base of that power. And of course, the denominator of that exponent can't equal 0. This x here should actually be an n. n can't equal 0. OK, so let's work through some examples. 36 to the exponent 1 half. Well, like we said, 1 half is equivalent to just saying the square root. So this is the same thing as just saying the square root of 36, which we know is 6. What about 
negative 121 to the exponent 1 half. Hmm. If you try to figure out the square root of negative 121, you're going to end up with something that is undefined. It's not possible. There's no number that if you multiply it by itself gives you a negative number. So at first glance this looks like it's impossible. But there's another example down here where it's the same thing except the negative 121 to the exponent half. The negative 121 is in brackets. These are in fact two different questions, so what's the difference? The difference is that this one is the one that's undefined, whereas the one above it is actually equal to an answer. Uh, if we ignore this negative sign right here, we can say that the square root of 121 we know is 11. So remembering that an exponent only really works on what it's directly attached to, in this case it's directly attached to the 121, but not the negative sign. So this negative sign actually gets left out front while we take the square root of 121, or we apply the exponent to this base. And we know that the, expo or, uh, the square root of 121 is 11, so this is negative 11. Please notice the difference here between these two questions. If it's in brackets, the whole thing is to the exponent. If it's non brackets, only what's directly attached is to the exponent. So here we have another base that's negative. We saw that negative 121 to the exponent 1 half, while well, brackets, was undefined. So can we find a solution for this one, negative 64 to the exponent 1 third? The reason this one's a little bit different is because we're not finding an nth root where the n value is even. We're actually finding an nth root where the n value is odd, in this case, 3. So we can find nth roots, or in this case cubed roots of numbers, even negative numbers, that will exist. Because a negative number times itself three times will turn itself back to negative. Well, what number times itself three times gives us negative 64? That is easy to figure out. It's negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. So the cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4. Well, now we have something a bit more interesting. We have a base 4, but it's to an exponent 3 over 2, which isn't just a simple 1 over 2 exponent that we saw before. So how do we evaluate something that looks like this? I'm going to show you two different ways in which we can look at it. Here's the first way. I'm going to write out 4 to the exponent 3 over 2, but I'm going to rewrite it as a power to a power. So I'm going to write this as 4 to the exponent 3, and then that entire power to the exponent 1 half. Notice that if we use the exponent rules here, 3 times 1 half is 3 over 2, so this is equivalent. And we know that the exponent 1 half means just take the square root. So 4 to the exponent 3 is 4 times 4 times 4. We just saw that that's 64. And this is 64 to the exponent 1 half. Square root of 64, that's 8. So 4 to the exponent 3 over 2 is equal to 8. Here's another way to look at it. Again, I'm going to write out 4 to the exponent 3 over 2. But this time, I'm going to keep the 4 with an exponent of 1 half. And then we're going to put that power to the exponent 3. Again, mathematically this works because 1 half times 3 is 3 over 2. Well, 4 to the exponent 1 half is the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So this is 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Both of these methods got us to the same answer. And they both involve either taking a square root or an nth root of some sort, whatever the denominator happens to be on the exponent's fraction. And then we will apply an actual exponent, so let's say a 3 or a cubed or a squared, depending on what the numerator is. Here's a formulaic way to look at it. Any base that's, we'll just call A, that's to an exponent m over n, well, 
we can either evaluate this in two different ways. The first is we can put this base a to the exponent m, which is the numerator of the fractional or rational exponent, and then we're going to take the nth root, n is the denominator. Or we can take the nth root first of our base, and once that's resolved, we can then put it to the exponent m. We also sort of discovered that if n, the denominator, happens to be an even number, then we know that our base a must be a positive number. On the flip side, if we know that the n value is odd, which means the denominator is odd, or we're going to take an nth root where the root is odd, then the a or the base can be any real number. It can be positive or negative, and it will still work. And that's essentially how rational exponents work. We're taking nth roots, like square roots or cube roots, and we may even have to apply just a normal exponent. So looking at one final example, negative 32 to the exponent 2 over 5. There are two ways in which we can try to evaluate this. The first is to first take our negative 32, our base, and we're going to put it to the exponent that's the numerator. Once that happens, then we're going to take an nth root, whatever the denominator happens to be. In this case, it's 5. So we're going to put it to the exponent 1 over 5, which is just the same thing as saying the fifth root. Well, negative 32 all squared, that's a really big number. 32 times 32, it's really hard to do in your head. So this actually might be a good lesson. Maybe it's easier to take the root first and then apply the exponent. So let's do that instead. I'm going to rewrite this instead as negative 32 to the exponent 1 fifth, and then we'll take that whole thing and we'll square that answer. Again, this is equivalent, so you can do either one, but this one looks like our number is going to get smaller first, and then we'll make it bigger, rather than trying to solve some giant number and then making it smaller. Wow, some big number and taking the fifth root would be pretty hard to do too. The fifth root of negative 32, we need to think of some number that will multiply to itself five times to become negative 32. If you know your powers of 2 very well, then you'll know that 2 to the exponent 5 equals 32, which means that negative 2 to the exponent 5 has to equal negative 32. So the fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. We're then going to square that, because there's a squared here, and negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. Ooh.